So leadership as we know it is changing fundamentally and there is a huge call for leaders to show up in a different way to lead. Hello, my name is Karina Kingston and I'm an executive coach. I'm based in Ireland, I'm originally Irish and I live in the south of Ireland in Cork where I was in fact born. Uh, in my early 20s I left Ireland. Um, at that time it wasn't, the opportunities in Ireland weren't uh, the best and I was hungry to travel as you can imagine in your early 20s. So I left and lived for a period of time in Germany and then in London and for 13 years I was in fact in Switzerland. So after 25 years of being abroad I decided to return to Ireland and set up home here once again. I live with my son, our newly acquired puppy and our cat uh, right out in the countryside and I really enjoy being in nature, in cooking, meditating and I love being back in my home country. I didn't always used to be an executive coach. In my past life, my first career, I was actually a commodity trader. I was an international trader. I completely fell into this sector um, whilst living in Germany, I joined an import-export company and that started my curiosity around the profession. I loved the international, very diverse aspects of it and meeting somebody from different countries, experiencing them and their culture and I found that fascinating. Uh, during my career, I've had the opportunity to travel a huge amount, which I've always loved, really to immerse myself in different cultures and be around people and see the world through their eyes. So you might ask, what has led me on the path of executive coaching and leadership development? And I can trace it back as far as my early 20s, when I... Was, had a real passion around developing myself as a person uh, and what makes people th tick. And that's something that has evolved through my life, I suppose. Um, some of the first books I started reading was Wayne Dyer's Your Erroneous Zones uh, and also Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, a couple of very classical books in this field. And that started a lifelong collection of books in the area of personal development and unlocking people's potential. Throughout my career, I was always curious as to what motivated people, what made people do what they did. And, you know, certain people being successful naturally and others less so. And the whole idea of performance and how people show up and how that impacts their performance. So I consider myself having actually coached formally and informally for many years throughout my career with the teams that I had working for me, helping them develop, helping them to get to understand what's going on for them and why things mightn't be going the way they want to or getting clear around goals and challenges that they might have. So I originally trained as a coach back in 2007 and I have been coaching formally and informally since that time, uh, predominantly on a part-time basis, but more recently in the last two years, I've gone back and continued my studies and now have set up my own business in this field. I have also been actively involved in a couple of mentoring programs um, where professional women are mentoring one another 
and it's fabulous work. It's really rewarding to see how the relationships that take place between mentor and mentee and the growth that takes place and the learning for both sides, in fact, is so impactful into the lives, particularly of the mentee. So what's the difference between coaching and mentoring? Coaching works on the premise that the coachee, the client, has their own answers inside them. And it's actually the coach's role to facilitate the coachee to actually explore and find those answers. And it's a very powerful process because we can be told to do something very often and we don't do it. And it's because, you know, the learning isn't ours. The timing may be not right for us. I don't know what's the internal makeup of my coachee. I don't know whether it makes sense for them to follow my piece of advice or not. So we find with coaching, the exploration and the actual arriving at the, the answers for the self is so much more impactful and powerful for the coachee that they do take action beyond that. And mentoring is a more, uh, is, is a different role because mentoring, it's understood that the mentor has some impactful and useful information that they can impart on the mentee to help them on their journey. And that is, that's also very important. You know, I don't know what I don't know. So if the mentor has a piece of information or has some insights through their experience within their career to share with the mentee that is also extremely useful my own coaching style is in fact a mixture of both i find that my clients want where where there's knowledge because i've got a commercial background i've got a career in corporate behind me i've obviously built up a lot of experience in leadership development and uh, working with people, working with teams, working with peers, working with boards during that time. And that helps um, a coach, a coachee, to really get another insight. But ultimately, it is really on the coachee themselves to find their own answers. I might share with them an experience or offer them an experience of my path but it is just that. It is not a piece of advice. We are never advising in this role. So we're entering a very interesting time in our world right now. We have something that is called VUCA, volatility, uncertainty, chaos, and ambiguity going on. Um, economies are in turmoil. We've been in a financial crisis since quite some time and the volatility and disruption that is taking place right now in our world is huge. Uh, we only have to look at what's happened in this year with COVID and the impact COVID has had on all levels of society, but also on business and how businesses can um, continue to operate in this very volatile, disruptive environment. So leadership as we know it is changing fundamentally and there is a huge call for leaders to show up in a different way to lead their teams and their organizations in a very different capacity and to navigate the challenges, the complexity of what's going on right now in a way that is more sustainable over a longer term. So up to this point, leadership has been very much about command and control, carrot and stick, motivating people. We very much often had leaders in roles and they were quite ego driven as individuals. We're moving now into a place where that is has all shifted and is shifting. And we're moving away from this idea of focusing on profit, whilst we as companies want to make profit, of course, and it's, it's the lifeblood, it keeps us all existing. Purpose is the key 
um, driver, let's say. We're in a time where we have multiple generations in organizations right now, and it's very, very interesting. Right now, I think in terms of millennials, 2020 is the year that we've hit about 50% of millennials in our workforce. And of course, we all know that millennials are looking for different things in the workplace. They were looking for more work-life balance. They're looking for more meaningful and purposeful work. And that's going to drive the way things go forward in the future, as well as what's happening out there in our economy and in our world. So the call is really for more conscious leaders to be present, leaders to show up with a mentality of serving their people, of enabling their people, their teams and the organization to really mobilize them into becoming more creative and more innovative to be able to address the challenges and issues that are out there right now for organizations. So one of the areas that I personally have become very interested in and something that I believe can actually help us move leadership along in this time is the idea of vertical leadership development, which has been around for the last 50 to 60 years, but I think it's now becoming really more relevant to the time we're in with this VUCA environment, this high level of disruption, as we mentioned earlier. What's vertical leadership development? Well, the basis is that as adults, the findings are that we continue to learn and develop just like children, which has been well researched and documented, adults also continue to learn and develop. And much of the development that we do today in terms of developing our leaders is on a horizontal basis, which is adding competencies and skills to our skill set. And that is very vital, but also is very vital is this idea of vertical leadership development. And the reason why is because we have, according to a Barrett Brown 2014 document, we have about 85% of our leaders are conventional leaders. And actually only 4% are in the highly conscious leadership category. That means we are really having a huge leadership gap around um, people being able to show up and handle and navigate this leadership in this time and the, with the level of complexity that's out there. And we're going to have to narrow that gap. And I believe that vertical leadership is the route to doing that. So there are about seven to eight stages in vertical leadership development, depending on um, the theory that you follow starts with the opportunist and the conformist, moving through the expert and the specialist on to the catalyst and the synergist. And you can't surpass in your uh, career, in your adult development, any one stage. And similarly, we move along that spectrum throughout our adult life. Transformation happens, however, at the catalyst and synergist stages where we can create real shift and real change. You know, it used to be thought that we could evaluate, I suppose, history or what's happened previously in our experience of work in challenges that we had and find the solutions from looking back at what happened. And that's not the case anymore. The world is very uncertain, you know, we've got, we've got AI now, we've got huge developments coming forward and it's not very clear how things will evolve. So what's very important is to really access that emergent future through not only the cognitive function, but being able to tap into what the possibility could be. And by doing that, we need to also access our heart and our gut. 
and just be more showing up in a being state rather than this doing state. And that's what moving into the catalyst and synergist starts to be about. What are the benefits of vertical leadership development and why consider it as an approach in your own leadership development? Well, for a start, it allows us to become more aware of ourselves and more aware of others, how we and they are showing up. It also allows us to access our own emotional intelligence. And that's, as we know, really important uh, in today's environment. We gain clarity, again, another really important one, and certainly at Synergist we start to get, gain a clear, calm mind, which helps us to access a new level of thinking. We become a conduit for our people, and we enable and empower our people, both at individual and team level, to find solutions for themselves and for the team, raising the level of what's being done in the work. We access then our evolutionary purpose and vision for the team. And we bring people along that journey through our own inspiring leadership style. And ultimately, we create organizations that are fit for the future environment we're going through. So, CK Coaching and Consulting offers bespoke programs based on individual client needs. We predominantly work with mid and senior level female, but actually anybody that's interested in their developing their own leadership style, I'm happy to talk to. So if you'd like to have more information or you would like to set up a chemistry session, please don't hesitate to reach out. My website address is www.karinakingston.ie karinakingston.ie Equally, you can reach me on LinkedIn or my international number is 00353 I hope you found this interesting and I really thank you for your time. Go well.